back, back with another attack. So come on in and just relax. Hit subscribe and join the fun. You're Zach to the future now, son. What's up, YouTube? Zach's back with another attack. Today I wanted to review Spider-Man Homecoming for you. As you can see, I just got back from the midnight showing of Spider-Man. And man, my mind was blown. This is, without a doubt, the best Spider-Man movie we have had yet. Now, part of that may just be because I just finished watching it for the first time, haven't really gotten to delve into some of the issues and stuff with it, but they definitely did a great job with the characterization and pacing and telling a great story. There's some really, really great things about this movie. And there's a few bad things, which I'll discuss. This thing's gonna be as spoiler-free as possible, but if you wanna go in completely clean, you might wanna wait until after you watch this movie to watch this video. But like I said, I'll try and stay as spoiler-free as humanly possible, and you should watch this movie as soon as you can anyway. So let's get right to it. Probably the best thing about this movie is the characterization. Tom Holland is a great Peter Parker. I think that the Amazing Spider-Man kind of had a good Spider-Man, and the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans kind of had a good Peter Parker, but this movie finds a great balance of both, and it really focuses on Peter Parker as well as Spider-Man, and how they coincide, and who he is behind the mask, and his day-to-day -day life more than just his superhero life which is something I really like. The high school is very believable. All of the characters make sense in the plot of the movie and their actions are believable. The only thing that I really don't like would be the character of Michelle. Now there is a little bit of a twist with her that I don't want to give away, but I will say that some of her actions seem a little weird. They didn't delve into her characterization quite enough for me. And once you know the twist, I think you might completely see what I'm saying and agree with me, hopefully. But if not, that's okay too. This is just my opinion. Another thing that was really, really good about this movie was the villain. Michael Keaton as the Vulture is next level. He's almost as good as Loki. The MCU really has a big issue with not having good villains, but this movie definitely fixes that issue. This character has good motivation. He's got great powers that are believable and make sense how he developed them. And there's a twist with him as well. But again, I don't want to spoil, but you know how much I love twists. And I didn't see it coming. So that automatically makes him a good villain. Not only that, but he's a character that can continue working within the Marvel Universe, where some other villains are immediately killed off and they have no potential later, or their actions have no potential later. One of the things that I really like about the Marvel Cinematic Universe is how the Chitauri from the first Avengers movie and their technology and stuff really plays into all the other movies, and this is no exception, for sure. A lot of the alien technology definitely plays into this movie, but it's not just that. This movie tries to really focus on Peter Parker and how he's learning to master his abilities. Another thing that I was kind of worried about is in the trailers, they made a big deal about Iron Man being in this movie. Robert Downey Jr. is such a charismatic and intricate character that he kind of draws attention. And I was worried that that would detract from Spider-Man as a whole, but it really didn't. The scenes that he was in were somewhat far and few between, but not only that, when he was on screen, it was written so perfectly and it was done in such a way that he didn't take the attention away so much as add to the story and really continue building everything that was going on and add another layer of complexity to the character of Peter Parker. And because he was used so sparingly, I think every time that he was used was that much more effective. Another character that was a little bit iffy though is Aunt May. Her character was great, but it still throws me off a little bit just how young she is. And I think a big part of that is just from knowing the comic book material and from knowing the other movies where she's portrayed as a little bit older. But in this movie, she's kind of that hot relative that gets hit on. And to me, that's just not Aunt May. But I will say, she has one of the best moments of the entire movie. And 
once you see it, I think you'll know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to spoil that either. So let's move on a little bit into the story. Spider-Man Homecoming is called that because it takes place around the homecoming time of his school. I think this is a very fitting title because, like I said, this movie tries to show you his school life and his interactions with other classmates and how they view him in and out of the Spider-Man suit. And not only that, but the trailers show a scene where Robert Downey Jr. tells Peter Parker that if he's nothing without the suit, then he shouldn't have it. And to me, this movie really embodies that because it shows you that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, whether he's in the suit or not. But this being a MCU film, there is destruction, there is people getting injured, there is serious consequences for the things that are going on. Something that I really like about this side of the MCU is that the earlier movies in the Marvel Studios really didn't focus on as much. But I do like how as they go, they focus more on the consequences of everything that's going on. I wish that they played a little more into it because there is some destruction and stuff that Peter Parker does, but it kind of goes unnoticed. Robert Downey Jr. doesn't really comment on it. The news doesn't really comment on it. We kind of just see it, and I think you can tell that it gets to Peter a little bit, but it really doesn't get shown within the lore of the movie how that's being affected by everything. Other than the fact that it's showing that Peter is really building his skills still, and he's not really fully competent yet. I do think that Peter's best friend in this movie is really great. I don't know that guy from anything else, but they did really good casting. He's kind of the character that Marvel uses to bounce funny lines off of or progress Peter in the story, but overall he definitely is good for comic relief and he's a very likable character. And if nothing else, he really humanizes Peter. And one more character thing that I have to mention, they return the character of Happy from the Iron Man series. Seeing the little callbacks and characters from other movies come back and stuff, that just really makes me happy. I love the intertwining of the different movies and little things that you don't necessarily need in that movie, but it really makes the whole MCU come together as a whole. Those things just really, I just love them, okay? As for how they set up Spider-Man Homecoming 2, uh, which has been officially announced, but they haven't announced the title. Uh, the code name is kind of Spider-Man Homecoming 2, but that's only because it's a sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming more than it's actually going to be called Spider-Man Homecoming 2. It's kind of just a silly title. As for how they set it up, they do so amazingly. There's more villains in this movie than you would think. Let's just put it that way. And the way that they handle that sets up not only Spider-Man Homecoming 2, but also possibly how the MCU can use other Spider-Man villains throughout their movies, and perhaps even how Sony can use the other Spider-Man villains throughout their non-MCU Spider-Man movies. One of which is going to be the Venom and Carnage movie that's coming out soon. So excited for that. One more thing, there is actually two post credit scenes, so if you're watching this movie, definitely stay till the very, very end of the credits, you don't want to miss anything. And if I had to rate this movie, I would give it a 9.5 out of 10, probably. I mean, I really would give it that 10 if some of the little things were better. I think the character of Michelle could have been a little more fleshed out, but it's not entirely necessary, so I can't fault them for that. But just the way that I feel like she's going to be a bigger character later on, really makes me think that they should have built her up a little bit more throughout this story and her characterization throughout this story. As well as, like I said, focusing on the destruction that Peter does while he's learning to be Spider-Man a little bit more and focusing on some of the cool things he does a little bit less. One thing that really kind of threw me off was how Iron Man-y his suit is. I get that Tony Stark makes it in this universe, but I don't know how I feel about having uh, AI within his suit doing basically everything that Jarvis does. Which by the way, his is called Karen, and that is a great character. 
if you consider that AI a character of its own, but it really was unnecessary to me to a certain extent, and I like how some of the other movies and the comics really didn't have that. It was just the kid in the suit doing his thing. But the quips are great, Tom Holland's acting is great, the villain's great, the story's great. This movie is great. Definitely, definitely worth seeing, whether you like the MCU or not. If you have any interest at all in Spider-Man, this is the one to watch. Forget all the other ones. Maybe watch Spider-Man 2, the original Spider-Man 2, that is. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Don't ever watch that. But, I gotta admit, I am so pumped for Spider-Man Homecoming 2. Because if it's anything like this movie, gonna blow your mind but anyway guys that's all i got for you let me know down in the comments what you thought of this movie if you've seen it yet if not what are you waiting for go see it right now man just pause this video and head to the movie theater but before you hit that pause button and go watch the movie or watch it again if you've already seen it hit that subscribe button i love you guys i'm zach and i'll catch you in the future